Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Uh, today we'll be having a panel discussion on components, modules, and assemblies. Uh, I'll be your moderator today. My name is Gary Spingarn. I am a product manager at Hamamatsu for infrared devices, detectors, LEDs, and quantum cascade lasers. I must say it's really good to have everyone in person again. So good to see you all. Uh, why don't we just go around and start with some introductions? Okay. Um, hi, I'm Dino. I'm an applications engineer. I specialize in point detectors. So that includes photodiodes, APDs, MPPCs, and PMTs. So I help with product selection as well as simulations. Hello, my name is Lu Chen. I'm the application engineer specializing in image sensors. My job is to help our customer with the sensor selection and the circuit design around our sensors. Hi everyone, my name is Neil Patel. I'm also an applications engineer and I support products similar to Dino and Lu, but more specifically around the modules that utilize these components. And uh, how are you? My name is Jake. Um, I'm actually on the marketing side, similar to uh, Gary, uh, in the business development manager group. And uh, my role in that group is to look at the new products, new markets, or new industries to develop. Uh, and uh, so my main responsibility at Hamamatsu is automotive LiDAR. All right, that's great. Uh, looks like we got a really good panel of experts here. So why don't we start off basic? Let's start off small. What would you say the differences between component and module and or assembly? So I can start off here. A component is a broad term. So when we talk about a component, I can put it in terms of an example. If we talk about a camera, the component inside of a camera is the image sensor. But now when we talk about the entire system, the camera is a component of that system. So I think for the sake of this conversation, we can say the component is the core technology, like the detector or light source. And then the module is that core component plus some electronics, optics, mechanics. Yeah, and one of the things to keep in mind too is the definition between component and module might differ from customer to customer. So it's you know important to make sure that we're on the same page with each customer when we start these conversations. Yeah, Hamamatsu makes all kinds of image sensor chips, uh, CMOS and CCD for UV and visible light detection. We also make the in-gas image sensor for IR detection. But you know, with a single sensor chip, you are not able to acquire any uh, image or spectrum data because the uh, image sensor is a photodiode array operated in the integration mode. So the timing control, the readout electronics, the bias voltage and the digital uh, pro signal processing circuit are required to acquire the image and the sp uh, spectra data from the sensor. So any feature added around the sensor chip could be part of the module uh, solution. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, you know, from the component point of view, we have a lot of uh, detector technologies like uh, APD, SPAD, and PPC. But specifically for MPPC and SPAD, we actually have um, some kind of you know, like an integrated ASIC functionality that we can do. So to your point, uh, Lou, uh, you know, all those circuits essentially can add it to a circuit, to to a, in, to a ASIC, which really means application-specific integrated circuitry. Yes, and, you, are, you are right. Yeah. Some image sensor itself is a photodiode array plus the ASIC. Right. And we, you know, from the MPPC SPAT point, kind of different but similar to uh, image sensor, we can uh, kind of do a 3D stacking and add the two together, make the two together, uh, really simplify the design for the customer. So that would that would be qualified as like a, like a semi-assembly, optical assembly uh, type of uh, uh, solution. Yeah, and the benefits um, of ASIC are clear for those kinds of detectors because of the density of channels. You know, you're talking about a lot of readout circuits that you need to compress into a small, um, space, so that's where the ASIC is really beneficial. But we could really put ASICs with any any of our products, you know, photodiodes, uh, APDs. We can combine them with single channel detectors as well. So speaking of ASIC, which is specific, or pull up the website right now or the catalog. There is a long list of standard modules. Uh, so can anyone kind of dive into uh, perhaps why choose a standard module or why go the custom route? What are the differences? Why do we have standard modules if we can do custom and ASIC? Right, so we have actually some examples of standard modules here and we have many standard modules. And the point of the standard module is that they're 
uh, applicable to many different applications. Um, and we have them in stock. They're you know quick to to procure, so our customers can get up and running with their evaluation as quickly as possible. But because we design them for such a broad set of applications to be used in, in any of these applications, the specifications on them aren't as tight as they would be as if you had designed them for a specific application in mind. Um, and so that's where the custom module comes in. So if the customer tries our standard module and they say, hey, you know, this is good, but something can be changed, that's where we start the custom Customization. And some of the examples of customizations we can do, we can change the bandwidth, we can reduce the noise on the amplifier, we can even add co optical components like fiber attachments, lenses, that sort of thing, even housing and change up the, the, the overall shape of the module. So those are some of the, the easier customizations that we can do. Yeah, like what Dino said, the standard module provides you an easy way to evaluate the sensor and also provides you a baseline for any custom module design. Uh, for example, here is uh, our standard CCD uh, driver circuit. So this driver circuit includes uh, four different boards. One is the sensor board, uh, the analog front end is the board, which includes a uh, 16-bit uh, ADC on the board, and FPGA board, and also the USB board. So with this module, the user doesn't need to worry about how to apply the multiple phase clocking and how to handle the high voltage bias. So they can easily uh, evaluate the sensor, make the decision on the sensor selection, and uh, quickly do the concept, of, uh, the proof of concept. Uh, but if uh, the user likes the driver circuit performance and wants some additional features, or a different form factor, we also can offer the OEM custom module based on this uh, standard design. Yeah, and driver circuit and eval board versus modules, that can be a little bit confusing too. So how, there is a lot of overlap between them, but generally how we distinguish between the two is the module is pretty much designed to be operated as is. There's a little bit of adjustment you can do with um, with with maybe bias voltage and that sort of thing. But eval boards are designed to be uh, played around with. So you can change the bias voltage, you can even change the amplifier configuration. So there's a lot more flexibility. Um, so it's designed for the customer to, to play around with them and see what the best parameters are, because that'll help them decide what the custom specification should be for the custom module. So there's a lot of overlap, but that's generally how we distinguish between the two. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And, and I think that one of the main reasons why we do so much custom work, and I think 80%, am I right? 80%, right? It's yeah, almost totally. like custom for Hamamatsu. It's because, uh, you know, we work with so many different markets, industries. And, uh, you know, so we have to take account of different uh, optical requirements in different industries and markets. But not only that, even within the same market, there could be multiple different designs. Right, so each of those designs are going to be unique from each other. So we work with our customers to design this custom solution so their designs benefit can kind of shine in that market. Right. And another thing is I have a like a little detector, a little source here on the table, but you know. Hamamazu is not really just a detector company or a source company. We actually have both. We can we have the flexibility and expertise to join the two together if we want to, right? Because often that's what customer wants to. They want a full optical module to have both components inside. Uh, yeah, that's kind yeah. of my take. And in addition to offering both detectors and sources, even on the detector side, we have pretty much the entire range of detectors from photo doubts to PMTs, which is kind of unique in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're pretty much detector agnostic. So whichever detector works best for the customer, that's where we'll design towards. We're not going to try to push them in any one direction because we can offer any type of detector pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I see a crossover to, say, QCL modules. I mean, QCL itself, there's a huge list of specifications that you can kind of change and play around with, but there are so many things that are required to run it. So typically, you could start with a module that has driver, function generator, um, you know, power supply, driver in there, and then you can kind of figure out where you want to go. But from there, since it's such a complex system, you probably need some customization. Uh, so I heard some comments about we got detectors, light sources, eval boards, uh, uh, demo units, custom units. I'm sure a lot of people are glad to hear this. Uh, would you say that there is a general trend going more towards the modules and assemblies versus the components? Yeah, so uh, I'll give my take from the market point of view, right? Uh, there is definitely a trend from the market point of view. 
uh, because, uh, and I'll give three reasons why. Uh, the first reason is because many customers today, when they design a module, uh, they need to bring a lot of different components together. And when they do that, uh, there's never going to be a perfect, you know, one try that everything works well together. So uh, there could be something goes wrong, you know, with the detector or the sources, but it's hard for them to track down what went wrong mm -hmm. in that design process. So having one uh, joint uh, product assembly or a module in this case could probably solve their headache in a lot of cases. Uh, but not only from that point, uh, many of these products that they're trying to design, their system they're trying to design, are meant to work in application specific markets. And each of them have uh, a lot of uh, requirements. For example, uh, you know, in a medical market, you need FDA, in uh, automotive, you need AEC. There's many other qualification requirements that has to be met for them to sell to that market. So when they to do that, they have to uh, qualify every component, which is like a big time cost and, you know, it takes a lot of time, all of their design cycle, production cycle away. Uh, you know, Hamamatsu, from our point of view, we can offer this custom design that meet their requirement, not from the uh, not only from the spec point of view, but also from the qualification point of view for that industry. And I would say the third benefit is really address the, the pain points of the sourcing side, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the design finished, now you want to bring that to a production. Then you have to figure out how to bring the different components together to make a high volume manufacturing uh, process happen. And uh, you know that's a pain because now you have to work with so many different suppliers to figure out, okay, I need this part number, this has this long lead time, you know, it causes a lot of problems at the end of the process for the customer. So uh, that's another reason why a customer look at Hamamazu in some cases to really simplify this uh, process at the sourcing side of things. Right. So as you go for more integration, you're essentially lifting more burdens. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Make yeah. everything simplified. Absolutely. Jake covered the complexity really well. But one other aspect to think about too is, you know, with uh, prototyping and development, things are moving a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is, you know, there's uh, more availability for faster prototyping techniques like yeah. 3D printing. You can get a board made in a few days. Um, so our customers are moving faster, but their competitors are also moving faster. So um, there's a push towards faster development times. And one of the ways to do that is to leverage the expertise of the vendors, um, especially for the critical components, like in this case, the detectors and the light source, to leverage their expertise to, to speed up the development by offering module instead of just a simple component. Yeah, how much who has uh, engineers who understand our sensor best? And we gained a lot of experience on how to optimize the performance coming from the sensor. Uh, for example, it, it's very easy to design a ADC to read from the sensor output and convert it to the digital code. Uh, but it could be very tricky if the a designer find out actually the signal to noise ratio <clears throat> is not so good as uh, uh, what the sensor is supposed to have. Uh, but our our engineers have has uh, gained a lot of experience on how to uh, optimize a uh, signal to noise ratio of the analog front end <clears throat> circuit around the sensor, which is the most critical part to uh, the whole system performance. And Hamamatsu has some very long-term customers. Uh, we have been working with them for over 30 years. So they used to have a very stable engineering team. But nowadays, the market is uh, moving faster and faster. It's much harder to keep a stable engineering team. So, uh, uh, and now it becomes very challenging for this customer to deliver a high quality design in a very short time frame. They see the way our module design group can help. Yeah. And just to add on to what you were mentioning, Lou, mm -hmm. so as you said, a lot of these companies, they don't keep the expertise in-house. So what is kept in-house is usually their core IP or their core technology. And to give like a little bit of an example here, a company that has expertise in, let's say, analog and digital electronics, they would likely just get our core component and then just integrate that into their system. But then a lot of these companies, their specialties are actually on the software side. So they prefer these plug and play modules or some sort of a custom module with a custom interface so that they can focus on their core IP. Yeah, and also to just to kind of make another point, a lot of this customer could be startups. 
right? A lot of startups have yeah. like not even the software; they may have expertise to offer on the chemistry side, uh, a medical side. You know, they have a unique idea. They really want to build the optical design around it to bring that to the market. Uh, it's harder for them because they don't have a staff, uh, you know, of optical experts in house. Right, so I think this particular uh, customization of modules direction really helped them to kind of put all the pieces together to make their business and their their uh, company more successful. I definitely want to comment, especially in a startup type situation where speed and momentum is everything. You don't want to get uh, stuck. Yeah. Uh, at, for example, with IR detectors, right? very different from the near infrared and the visible. There's so many other factors they need to be read out in a special way. You're considering a whole different set of electronics and read out. There are different noise factors to deal with. The execution of the applications, it's so much more difficult. Um, it's just easier to kind of just leave it to the people who are experts on these systems. Uh, so I'm sure many people are getting excited about hearing all this, lifting all the burdens, uh, you know, getting started, hitting the market. So burning question here, if someone wants to get started, what's the process? Okay, so the process can get a little complicated. So let me try to explain this at a high level. So the first thing we want to do is first evaluate if the core technology works, so the component, image sensor, detector, light source. Um, then once we know that works, then we figure out what's a requirement and specification that's needed from the module perspective. And then once we have those, then we see if a product fits in that sort of requirement. If it does, then we test in the system. If it works, great. If not, we do some tweaks and try to figure out a way to get it designed in. So let me explain that a little bit more in depth at each of these stages. So when I mention we want to first see if the core technology works, so that kind of comes down to getting a demo in the customer's hands where we first want to see, OK, well, based on the customer's requirements or their system specs, uh, we think that a photo dot might work, so we want to test out a photo dot module. If it works and all those specifications work around the module, we can design that in. That's great. But then if we say that, OK, well, this did not work, so now we need to do some troubleshooting. We need to see if the core technology is a reason why it doesn't work, because maybe we need to go into an APD or a SIPM. And then once we figure out if the core technology works, now we go down to a deep dive into the system specifications, figure out OK, well, these are the type of electronics we need. These are the type of optics. This is the form fit that we need for it to fit into the system. Uh, once we have those specifications laid out, then we need to first see, do one of our standard offerings work for this? If not, is one of the standard offerings with some tweaks work for this? And then maybe we need to just build something from the ground up. And if that's the case, then we figure that out. We do some iterations of designs. And then once we can get to a product that can be fit into the system, then that should be both. So you described a lot of situations and a lot of steps uh, for everyone tuning in. Can you give a sense of timeline in certain cases? Yeah, so this is very broad because it really comes down to what are the customizations that are needed. So if we're talking about a standard module and a standard module would work theoretically, then that could take two weeks to two months just because we would get that into the customer's hands. They would test and evaluate it and see if it works. If it does, great. But now if we're talking about any sort of customization to that, that could be something as simple as change the bandwidth for this amplifier. That can take an engineer five, 10 minutes to change easily. So that could also be two weeks, but it could take a few months depending on mm -hmm. what that requirement is. And then if we're talking about building something from the ground up, that could be a three to a nine month period. And if we're talking about ASICs, those are like nine to 15 month timelines these days. Yeah, like what Neil said, the module development is case by case. Uh, but for typical image sensor modules, after the sensor is selected and uh, the specifications are settled, the uh, schematic design, firmware design, software design, and the housing design actually can happen in parallel. So typically, uh, the design cycle of an image sensor module is uh, six months. And then we need a two months for the evaluation test. So it's totally about eight months from the design specifications to the prototyping uh, de delivered. 
Yeah, so it could take a bit of time, but you know, one of the ways to speed that up on the front end is if the customers have ironed out their specifications, because that mm-hmm. that takes a lot of time too. If the specifications aren't ironed out yet, there could be a lot of back and forth between mm-hmm. us and the customer, the engineers, to figure out, you know, really what the specifications should be. So if those are ironed out in advance, then that saves a lot of time on the front end. You know, a few weeks. Gotcha. So I think it's fair to say that process isn't necessarily easy, but definitely worth the effort. Uh, so why don't we just give some examples of success? Yeah, I could start. Um, so we had a customer that um, was working in the medical imaging space, and they wanted an MPPC with a scintillator um, in an array format, a large array, and they wanted to connect as many arrays as, as they wanted for their system. So different configurations, mm-hmm. depending on the, the type of product they were offering. Um, and so you can imagine if you have an array of detectors, you're talking about that many readout circuits and supporting electronics for each channel. Um, and so what we did for them was design an ASIC that reads out all the channels from the, the array. So we we compressed you know, what would be a, typically a large circuit down to a smaller design. And also we made it a modular design so that they could daisy chain as many modules as they want mm-hmm. without having to redesign their interface. So we designed a custom protocol, communication protocol, so they could talk to as many modules as they wanted. And it made it easy to swap detectors in and out for maintenance too. So. Um, for this type of development from start to finish, it took about two years. Um, and part of the reason for that was there were many iterations. So we would send a prototype, we'd get the mm-hmm. feedback from the customer, then design another prototype, which took about six months for each iteration. Um, so it seems like a long time, but if you imagine it from the perspective of a customer, these are two years that their engineers don't have to be working mm-hmm. on this design and worrying about this design. That's a huge time saver. They can focus on their system and optimizing their system to improve their performance. So that's, you know, that's where you see the benefit from the customer. Side. And they end up with something that we can still change. It has modularity. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's modular. We, we design it, you know, knowing from our experience where the common pitfalls are. So we design it so that we avoid those pitfalls and, and we make it so it's easy to modify, you know, because we know there's going to be feedback from the customer and we know there's going to be improvements, maybe not just for, for this system, but maybe for a future development. If they want to use a similar module, but just tweak a few things, then we make sure that what we're designing can be modified and improved on in the future. Yeah, I mean, I have a much simpler example. <laughs> so uh, one of my customers, they're building a laser-guided surgery system. So they're using one of our standard APD modules to uh, monitor the laser power. And overall, that worked, but the ADC that they picked out to read out the module, it needed a certain amount of voltage and the module just couldn't output as much, but luckily it's an APD. So as we know, you can just increase the bias to increase the overall output and that works. But when you increase the bias of an APD, there's more noise that's being introduced. So one thing that we looked into is learning about the system, figuring out what are the operating conditions and trying to optimize this board, we realized, well, we could just add in another stage of amplification so that the burden of amplification can shift from the sensor to the electronics in this case, because they did have a, enough light. And with this, they were able to operate the APD at much lower bias. So just overall improving their SNR. And this sort of turnaround took less than two months from when we identified the issue to getting prototypes that can be designed in into their hands. Right. Yeah, it's a simple example, but it's a great example because it highlights one of the important aspects of when we're working on these customizations is we're not just looking at these specifications from, you know, a, a something that, okay, we designed to that, right? Mm-hmm. We're really trying to understand what the um, what the main point is that the customer is trying to achieve. And in addition to that, if there's any issues, we try to get to the root cause of what the issue is. So we're not just uh, covering up the issue with like, okay, we increased the APD gain, yeah. here you go, right? That Because that doesn't address the root cause. And and, and, it, and in, in the end, it may you end up with a subpar system. So we try to address the root cause and give them a solution that not only addresses the issue, but also improves upon the issue as well. So they get a better product overall. It's not just about making something to order. It's about exactly. leveraging the expertise for optimization. Right. It's not just checking off uh, a checkbox like, okay, we did this specification. Yeah. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're doing it right and, and mm-hmm. we're we're achieving not just the specification, but the intent of their designer. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to tell you a story. Uh, we have a customer looking at our linear sensors for a spectroscopy. Uh, and they quickly evaluated uh, multiple sensors by using our standard driver boards. And uh, finally, they find out our vaccine CCD and uh, the driver circuit actually could be a perfect candidate for their application. However, our standard driver circuit uh, provides only the Windows driver. 
So, but this customer is using an uh, embedded system with a very specific Linux uh, operating system. So our software team decided uh, uh, to help them with that, and they took uh, two months to develop this uh, Linux driver. So the customer can access a DLL function uh, to our driver circuit uh, by using their own platform. So this uh, development actually saved the customer about one year effort of designing the hardware, firmware, software. So yeah. You know, I guess from from because I've been in lidar for so long in you know, automotive world, I'll just give a couple of examples. And actually, in lidar, there's so many customization needed, and so many different kind of optical feature needed. For example, there's a mean sensor. You get the distance constructs the imagery. They need uh, power monitoring, like you mentioned, to look at you know how much light power is out of the laser because there's eye safety concerns. Uh, they have to steer the beam to different directions to construct the imagery. So they need some kind of uh, you know monitoring system to look at where that uh, beam is. So they check the position of the beam. Uh, so all of that are optical technology. But you know two specific examples I can give is we had a customer that had a design already set, use different lasers, different APDs, different drivers to drive the laser and uh, yeah, the electronics to read out the circuitry for the for the detector. And that's all need to be qualified under this umbrella mm -hmm. of AEC qualification of automotive LiDAR uh, applications. So the OEMs can use them. Um, the problem is, is a lot to manage and it creates so much complexity on the supply chain, not also not only from design side, but also the the, the production end of things. So, you know, we come in and kind of took the ownership and really simplified everything, made some design proposals to modify it, to improve it as well, uh, made it more compact. Essentially, we provide the whole module that's AEC qualified, that can be AEC qualified to uh, replace all that headache in a lot of ways, right? And it's also more streamlined this way. Another example, it come down to uh, the AC example I kind of used before. So this customer had a lot of uh, different features designed around the detectors. So you had the TOT, which is, uh, you know, time to digital. Uh, TDC is time to digital, TOT, uh, the threshold. Uh, and uh, they also had a lot of different uh, data processing to, to kind of filter out the noise. Uh, they use different they design electronics all around it and they have so many channels of the detector so when you talk about the density of the detector they had a lot of electronics design around it it's really uh, doesn't really help with their performance they kind of realize that because there's so much data has to be processed by different electronics levels right so what they did what we did with them to kind of help is we made this asic from scratch, took all the requirements and we made an ASIC and then we put, the, we made a custom detector array too. And we made the two together with a 3D stacking technology. And then we provided the packaging, the reliability checking, the ASIC qualification, uh, testing, all that, um, and give them this one finished product to kind of simplify all their electronics, manufacturing, everything. So that's kind of the two examples that I can give from the LiDAR point of view. So I just want to summarize real quickly, mm -hmm. um, just to like paint a picture, we named a whole lot of factors. So in case, anyone, uh, just to give the full breadth of how complex a module can be, we have detector, light source, readout, ADC, processing, qualification. A6. Yeah. A6. Yeah. yeah. More like, uh, yeah. Packaging, software, yes. band pads, filters. Yeah, form factor. <laughs> <laughs> Any other lens? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the, the the potential really is uh, limitless. Yeah. Um, and that's why I do this. I'm sure that's why I love you do this. Um, the world of photonics just continues to impress. Yeah, it can be complex, yeah. but as Neil pointed out, we can also be simple. Simple mm -hmm. visualizations as well. So. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm sure you're as excited as I am by the future. Uh, that pretty much wraps up our talk today. Um, I'd like to thank all of our experts. Um, I just want everyone to know that uh, Hamamatsu has a long track record of success and we're always prepared for the road ahead. Uh, also, all of our experts uh, in the room will be at Photonics West. Uh, can't wait to talk uh, to you there, so definitely come check us out. I want to thank everyone for their time, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you.